I'm Tamara, I love to knit, and this is a tutorial for this headband that I have on right here. This is a really basic, easy headband. It uses worsted weight yarn, which knits up pretty quickly, and it uses less than a skein. This is the leftover of one skein that I had. So great for scrap yarn that you have lying around if you have any leftovers from like a sweater project that you made. I think this version kind of looks like the cute wide Brigitte Bardot headbands that have been trendy for the last year or so. So I really love this specific silhouette. This is also double thick because it is double knit and that makes it actually really warm and functional for keeping your ears warm in the winter. For this tutorial, I used worsted weight yarn. This is Swish worsted. It's a super wash wool, so it is machine washable, which is nice, but you can use whatever worsted weight yarn that you have. I'm using US 8 or five millimeter needles. You can use either circular needles or flat needles. I'll show you how to do this headband, both flat and circular, because I kind of actually like to switch halfway through. You're doing double knitting if you want to knit it flat, or you're knitting in the round to make like a circular tube that will be folded on itself if you want to knit it in the round. Okay, so first let's cast on, and like I said, I'm using a worsted weight yarn. This is Knit Pick Swish, which is pretty affordable, and it's super wash, which I think is nice for giving gifts because people don't always know that you're supposed to hand wash a lot of wool things, and this is machine washable. So for this headband, it's about two and a half inches wide, um, so if you'd like yours wider or thinner, you can cast on fewer or more stitches. Uh, since it's double knit, we're always going to cast on an even number of stitches. So for this one, I'm casting on 26 stitches to get that width. And I'm using my US 8 needles. So we're going to start out by doing a long tail cast on. So take um, about this length of yarn. This will be your tail and then make a slip knot by putting a loop over your finger, pinching that, and then pulling the yarn through the loop. And that makes a slip knot. So we'll stick our needle through that slip knot. That's the first stitch. I have the tail at the bottom and this top one is connected to my skein of yarn. I put my finger in between those two strands and hold the two strands in my palm like this. And that means when I stick my finger out, I can pull that top strand, the one that's connected to the ball of yarn away. And then I can also put my thumb in and now I have this diamond shape. And I'm gonna use this to cast on. So the long tail cast on, I pull it down like this and now it almost looks kind of like a heart. That's just this diamond shape that I pull down like this. And I go under this strand, over this strand, and then pull that loop through. And once I pull that, that's a stitch that I've now cast on. So I'll do that again. I have this diamond shape. I pull it down. I'm going under this one, under the one that goes around my thumb, over the one that goes past my index finger, pull that through. Then I can let go with my thumb and pull. And now I've got another stitch. If you're not comfortable with this, you can also just swap this out for another cast on that you're comfortable with. It's not super important. This is just one that I like to use. So I've got 26 stitches and now we will turn this and grab the working yarn is the one attached to your ball of yarn. You can just kind of hold the tail out of the way for now. Don't knit with that one by accident because you'll have to undo it. And this first row, we're going to set up double knitting. So double knitting with a single color, you're going to knit the first stitch, knit one stitch, move the yarn forward as if we're going to purl, and then we're going to stick the needle in purlwise and slip it without purling it. And when we move the yarn back to knit the next stitch, that's going to put this little bar of yarn across it. And then we'll keep doing this across the whole row. So I'll knit one stitch, I'll move the yarn forward, I'll slip one stitch purlwise. And we're always doing things in pairs and double knitting. So knit one stitch, slip yarn. In English knitting too, in case you don't knit continental. So this is what it looks like in English. Knit this first stitch, bring the yarn forward, slip the next stitch without purling bring the yarn back in between the needles. So knit the next stitch, bring the yarn forward, slip the next stitch purlwise, 
bring the yarn back. So you'll just do this across the entire row and this is double knitting. So here I am on my, my last pair. So I just knit this stitch and now I'm going to bring the yarn forward and slip this one. And that's the end of my first row of double knitting. So now I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side. So I'm always doing the same knit and then slip. So here I am, I've got the yarn behind from my last round and I'm just going to knit this first stitch and slip the next one again. And if you get kind of lost during this and you're not sure if you're supposed to slip the next stitch or knit it, the way you can tell is the ones that you're supposed to slip will have this bump underneath and the ones that you're supposed to knit will have a little V. So I can see this next one has a bump. That means I need to slip that one. This next one has a V. That means I need to knit it. So if you are enjoying the double knitting right now, stick with it. You can just keep doing that until you get the full length and then you can skip ahead to where it says seaming. With this style of double knitting, these two flaps of fabric are actually only connected at the sides. So that means that aside from where you cast on at the bottom, they're attached and they're attached to the sides, but this part up here is actually a big tube. So I like to just slip this off my needles quickly and put it back on so that it's oriented with all of these stitches from this side are on one needle and all of the stitches from this side are on another needle. And then from there I can knit in the round. So I'll show you how to do this. Don't, if you're stressed about slipping stitches off, that's okay. You could knit a little bit more. That's why I knit at least this much to sort of stabilize the stitches so I don't lose track of what's supposed to be where. But we'll just quickly slip this off of our needles. And once it's off your needles, you can kind of start to see that these will separate a little bit. I'll stick it through from right to left through each stitch. And I'll pull that through, be a little gentle with this part. And then I'll bring my needle back around on the other side and stick it through the back side. Okay, so now I have half of the stitches are on my front needle, half of the stitches are on my back needle, and you just wanna double check, look around to make sure that you did not accidentally leave any stitches off. Um, I think this stitch actually I should have picked up with this needle, but it's not really a big deal. I can just slip it over when I get to it. So now I have this set up, I can actually just knit in the round. So here's how I like to do that. It's kind of like magic loop if you've ever done that before. So my working yarn is over here. The next stitch to knit is the one after the stitch that has a working yarn. So it's gonna be this one. Um, I can't really bend my needles like this, right? Cause they're like trapped. So I'll slip this needle out so that I can loop it around. And you'll wanna pull this working yarn a little bit tight because you don't want there to be a gap in the edges between these stitches. And now I can just knit every single stitch because from now on, I'm just working in the round. I'm not doing anything special. Oops, this got a little bit funky. So now I can actually just knit everything in the round. And again, if I were doing English style, I just, it's the same thing. It just looks a little different, but I'm just knitting everything. Okay, so like I said, I think this one stitch should have been on the back needle and not this one. And when I get to it, I can just pull this through and now it's joined its other little friends back there. So now I've gotten to the end of this row and I'll turn my work and I'll just do the same thing. I'll pull these stitches back onto this needle. I'll pull these ones out. I'll pull the working yarn a little bit tightly, a little bit snug and then I'll just knit across all of these. So 
So now I'll show you how to cast off. So I'll show it both ways. This is assuming that you switch to knitting in the round like I like to do. I'll show you how to do a three needle bind off. And then I'll also go back and show you how to do the double knit bind off. So for the three needle bind off, I like to use a crochet hook instead of a third needle because it's easier to grab the yarn through. So you'll put your stitches lined up on both of the two needle tips. And then you'll take the working yarn is in the back, put it through the right front leg of the first stitch on front and then the same through the back. And then wrap the yarn around the crochet hook and use this hook to pull the yarn through. So now you have a loop on the crochet hook and now you can let those two stitches slip off of the needle. So now we have knit one stitch. We'll do that exact same thing again for the next pair. And again, let those stitches fall off. And now we have two stitches in our crochet hook, so we can just pull the second one through the first one. And now we've cast off one pair of stitches. So then you'll just continue doing that across. And now I have just one stitch left and I can actually just cut the yarn here and then pull this loop all the way through and that will bind off the last two stitches. So that's how to do a three needle bind off. If you're knitting in the round, I think that's just a really easy way to finish it. Okay, so casting off if you had kept all of your stitches on double knitting. So we now have all the stitches on one needle and I'll show you how I like to cast off for this. So you have your knit stitch here and then your purl stitch behind. My tension's a little bit tight right now because I just put these back on the needle. Um, but I like to knit them together. And the reason for that is it's just um, nicer to have kind of a more uniform edge. So you'll put your knitting needle through the, the leg of both of those stitches. I'll wrap the yarn around and pull that stitch through. So I've knit those two stitches together. I'll do that on the next set too. And now I, once I have two stitches on my right needle, I'll take the farther one down, pull it up and pass it over the next one. So now I've cast off that set of stitches. And then I'll just continue down doing the same thing. So I'll go, here's the purl stitch on the back. I'll put my needle through both of those stitches, bring it through and then cast off. So I just got to the last stitch. So I'll cut leaving enough length that I can use to seam in the mattress stitch later. This is about how much I left. And I'll just pull that through. So by knitting those stitches together, this keeps it from flaring out too much. So it keeps it nice and compact and that will make it easier to seam in later. So now we'll use mattress stitch to stitch this together the two ends. So I have a tapestry needle. You want it to just be big enough that you can pass the yarn through it. This is the side we just cast off. This is the side we cast on. And now we'll use mattress stitch. So I'm going to look for upside down V's on this side and right side up V's on this side. And those are the, the stitches that I'm going to stitch together. So I'll grab this first one from the corner here. You can see that's an upside down B and I'll pass the tapestry needle through both legs of that stitch and pull it through. And now I'm going to grab the, the next one from like one row up. I just think it will look a little bit neater. You can see there's a V there, pull it through, move on. Here's the next V and I'll grab this one, one row up, you can see a V. You can kind of tighten as you go. Honestly, this doesn't have to look all that perfect since this is going to be generally hidden at the back of your neck or under your hair as you wear it. And sometimes I get a little bit spread out the V as you're working, but you're looking for two legs that are kind of pointing in towards each other. So I'm basically at the end and I'll just go back through this last corner here just to tighten that up a little bit. So there's the join. Mattress stitch looks pretty nice viewed from the right side 
and then you'll have this on the wrong side. I just have these two ends from where I cast on and cast off, so I'll just weave those in on the wrong side. So to weave them in, it's pretty easy to just go in and out on this edge row anyway, because there's already a bump there. So I just like to go back and forth. I like to go for something double knit like this. You can actually insert like into the layer in between them. So it's not visible on the other side. It's in between the two. And then I'll pull it out and then I'll pull it tight a little bit. So this gets bunched up and then I'll cut. And then when you kind of unpull it tight, the rest of that little end is just trapped in between. You won't be able to see it. So there you have it. So after this, I would give this a little bit of a soak in some lukewarm water and then just lay it out flat. And that will just help even out any tension issues or anything like that and just make it look really uniform and nice. But there's your headband. I hope you enjoy wearing it this winter and I hope it keeps your ears nice and warm.